My name is Grace Ame Obin. Uh, I'm the group CEO of Forever Clear Ghana. Uh, the group comprised of um, Forever Clear Cosmetic Industry, where we manufacture skincare products, hair care products, and color cosmetics, that is makeup, lipsticks, and all that. And then uh, uh, FC Beauty College, where we train uh, beauticians, spa therapists, and uh, hairdressers, and uh, help them set up their salons. And then we have FC Perfumery and Cosmetics, which is a distribution outlet of the uh, group. And then we have Grace and Melbin Foundation, which is the one catering for young girls who are lured uh, from the rural areas into the cities and become very vulnerable. And then we have uh, salon equipment and beauty supplies where we supply professional beauty products to salons, you know, to use on clients and also support them with um, equipment for salons. So and we also have uh, a, a, a hotel, a three-star hotel in one of uh, the regions, Volta region, Ellie Beach Hotel. Well, um, about some five years ago, I met a beautiful lady in Ghana uh, at a conference, um, Madame Fiona Wall, and we got introduced by a mutual friend, and uh, we clicked. So she invited me to Uganda to speak at one of her uh, conclaves, and uh, it went well. Uh, we saw the business opportunity because I brought some products with me, and it uh, generated a lot of interest. And so, um, going around the shops and the market, I realized that there was an opportunity to do business with Uganda. So we planned coming back, not only to sell products, but to establish a manufacturing uh, outlet here. And also to uh, see how we can cooperate with any of the existing vocational or technical schools and uh, you know, work with them in skills training. Uh, so that's why we came. Fortunately, uh, unfortunately first, COVID <laughs> struck, so we couldn't pursue our desires. But fortunately, um, the team has even gotten bigger. Uh, the interest in Uganda has gotten keener. And so we got, uh, I brought along uh, an investment company uh, uh, a construction company, the manufacturing a cosmetic company, and uh, we are here to see how best we are uh, going to be allowed to establish ourselves here for the benefit of both Ghana and Uganda. You see, I've traveled widely across Africa, Europe, wherever, and um, even China, Australia, I've been everywhere almost. And I've realized that, that with the vast, you know, rich resources we have in Africa, if we begin to identify the strength of each country, we would be able to add value to our own resources and uh, taking the population of Africa, the whole of Africa, the market is huge. So, um, Uganda has a lot of raw ingredients and materials that we can use in Ghana because we import a lot in West Africa and uh, we also have uh, the expertise in adding value to raw things and so that is already a business starting there. How do we exchange that strength or knowledge transfer to Uganda for their rich raw materials that they have? Um, it's a beautiful uh, symbiotic relationship and I'm sure that uh, as we begin to crisscross across uh, Africa, we would be able to do a lot. Especially, my focus is on women and uh, women businesses. Naturally, um, the role of a woman is to nurture, start a family, nurture the home, nurture a nation. So we are natural, you know, nature. So we should, why aren't we transitioning or transferring that 
passion or natural talent into business. We don't think big to start with. A woman will say, well, let me start doing this small. You know, we think small, let me, because our hands are full. We're trying to raise a family, you're trying to do so many things. And so you are afraid that when you do something big, you'll be consumed in the volume of what you are doing. But we must begin to learn that it's not always about you. And, and that when you start a business, you may be the originator of the idea, but with, uh, uh, when you are manifesting the idea, you need to add people to it. People that will support you. People ha that have the knowledge to help you grow. Otherwise, you remain in your startup state uh, because you are afraid to step out. And uh, you also must, um, it's not just about the idea, it's about uh, educating yourself to understand the best practice and manage the idea that you have. And so you must plan strategically. You must um, uh, engage people to help you. Uh, you must also plan to manage your finances well. When you start a business, don't say well, it's just something small. So you, you start, start dipping your hand in the money and using it as you please, buying the cloth for the latest party and all that. It will not help you. You must pay yourself salary from that small business. It doesn't matter how small it is. Pay yourself salary and spend that salary on yourself and leave the business capital to run for the business. And also, you should also um, try and engage or frequently attend conferences, seminars, join associations that will enrich you know, your deep in the knowledge and network because the people you meet may be your first customers or your growth pattern customers. And so when you meet people, market yourself, sell yourself, engage them at a level that people would have the interest in what you do and begin to invest in what you do. And I've been in business for 40 years already. It may not happen today. It's a gradual process, but we are in charge of the acceleration. And you must learn also to apply the brakes when you need. So a gradual gradient will help you clearly, you know, on the path that you want to go. With every business person, when you walk about and look about, you try to identify some needs that you must, you can meet. And so that is a business opportunity. If in this hotel I realize that, oh, maybe they can do with some scented candles, then I would approach management and say, look, I manufacture scented candles. Would you take it off me? And then I can go into that negotiation with them. So let's not just be blinded. There's so much we can do with the, with the resources we have in our environment instead of relying on people to come and use or add value to those for us. So let's, let's, let's be observant. Let's open our minds. Whatever it is you are doing, how can you diversify around your core business? Because if you're a seamstress and you sew for everybody in your community, how can you specialize? How can you just sew maybe shirt arms and package it for another country? You know, so we must begin to think outside the box. You don't have to sew the full dress. You can just focus on colors, designing colors and doing different patterns of it. In African, Afrocentric is very huge now and making, people are making millions out of it. So let's begin to think beyond what we do and diversify around your core because you have the resources, you have everything around you to put into good use, to scale up. We have just developed a gender policy for women, focusing on women activity. And uh, I, I'm sure everyone is aware of the AFTA, the African Free Trade you know, Agreement that is going on. And I believe when that is accelerated and the borders are collapsed and Africa be begins to trade in a common currency and uh, uh, we genuinely you know, seek opportunities understand what happens in every country on the continent. And then we'll begin to uh, shape a relationship across bo uh, uh, no more borders. It's, it's a borderless Africa. If it becomes a borderless Africa where we use one passport, we use one currency, we, we learn to uh, uh, embrace our cultures, 
and uh, understand the diversity of these cultures and respect the cultures across the continent. We would go far.